Good morning. Welcome to Scottish Summit. We're really excited to be here with you guys to talk about Power Automate today. Specifically, we'll be talking about how to sift through the more than 465 connectors available to you in Power Automate and figure out what you can use. Throughout this event, please feel free to use the hashtag Scottish Summit 2021 to follow along what everybody's saying about it. First of all, we want to make sure to thank all of our sponsors. Thank you for helping this event happen. We'd like to thank Script Runner, DQ Global, Proximo 3, Red Spire, Agile Sys, and Hitachi Solutions. My name is Heidi Newhauser, and I work for Reenhanced. We are a Power Platform and Dynamics 365 partner. I'm a Customer Success Director, and you can reach out to me on Twitter at CRM Heidi. Hi, my name is Nick Hans. I am the president of Reenhanced. Um, you can reach me on Twitter at enhance, um, or you can just email me enhance at reenhanced.com. So why are we talking about this? Power Automate has 465 connectors as of February 10th, 2021, and more are added every single week. So the struggle here is how do you know which you can use for your organization, which is a great question. And we are going to help you answer that over the next 45 minutes here. So we thought we would start with anatomy of a connector. So what do all Power Automate connectors have in common? Every connector has been certified. It's gone through the Microsoft certification process. Every connector that you can use in Power Automate has pre-built actions and or triggers to kick off a flow, and they have official Microsoft documentation. So that's a few things you're gonna find that are true across every single connector in Power Automate. But what does it mean to be Microsoft certified? This simply means Microsoft has validated all of the content within that connector. The connector has been fully tested and passes all tests. It's, the connector definition is open source. It's available anywhere. Um, and this last bullet point is important. Just because it's Microsoft certified doesn't necessarily mean it's useful in all cases. So Nick, tell us a little bit about how we can identify what's a good connector, what's not so good of a connector. Okay. so. Uh Good connectors are going to be independent of your business logic. Um, what that means is that you can uh, kind of fit them in for what you need for your particular use case. So if you are sending an SMS message, um, it can be done really simply just with uh, you know the, the details to send that SMS message. Um, an example of what might not be so good on that would be if it requires you to set up all your business logic and put your contacts in and put all of the other details in that just don't need to be there. You want something that just fits in, uses the bare minimum to, to, um, to work, and that's it. It doesn't require a lot of uh, other knowledge about your business to make it work. Um, so it can be used then for different scenarios as well. And that kind of ties in with that first option there where if it's small and tight and contained, then you can use that connector to do different actions in different places because it doesn't require that, back to, that background context uh, in order to, um, to, to use the connector. So you wanna have these things that kind of operate independently of your organization that don't require any of your, your business setup to be in there. Um, so if you have something that's, uh, you know, that, that does, that meets those requirements, it's generally going to be simple. That's not always the case. We have seen some that um, they're, they would otherwise be good connectors, but they just take a little bit more to, um, to set up. They're, they're just a, a bit too complicated to use. Um, and if you're doing that, then Power Automate may not be the best choice uh, because you want to use Power Automate for simple connections mostly. Um, there are a lot of ways to do it incorrectly, um, but uh, the, the right way to do it is to think about having these different pieces that fit in together. Um, and that's kind of fitting in with the fourth point here about um, good connectors being modular. Um, and that is so that if you keep these, uh, these integrations um, kind of separate in sort of, um, of how you're, you're plugging them in, um, it's going to be helpful for you to... Uh, uh, to be able to, to, to bounce around. So 
Um, again, I'll use the example, let's say we were using document signing, because that's a big thing that we see with the, the common data service or dataverse stuff. Um, so if you have a workflow and you need a document, you have a PDF that you've generated, and you need to get that signed, um, it's good to pick connectors that you can just drop in. Um, this gives you, as an organization, the ability to shop around, just like you can shop around for insurance um, on a personal level, and you make that call every year, right? Um, you can do this to, to swap in these connectors and find what's going to be the best for your business um, and, uh, and do it without having a big, deep connection. Um, so over time, you can evolve. You can use different connectors to, to meet these needs, always finding ones that are going to be the best, um, the best sort of fit for you. Um, in general, a good connector is very small, very tight and contained. You don't even need to read, read the documentation to start to use it, but you're probably going to want to anyway. I'll get into that a little bit more um, as we go further. So on the not so good side, um, things that you really want to avoid, again, I've kind of talked about how the, um, the, the connection, if it has business logic in there, if it has things in there that um, really requires more than it should uh, to set up, then it's probably not the best to use. Um, and sometimes you'll find connectors that look really great to start, but it's not until you start to use them that you realize that it doesn't have the actions or the triggers that you actually need. Um, and that then is, you know, these people are, are creating connectors to get you started with their company, but then they want to get you in and, and dig the hooks a little deeper. Um, I find that good businesses try not to leave hooks, they just try to provide great service. So you want to watch out for that. Uh, things that look great but have uh, little things that you might not think about right under the surface. Um, one of the things with Tower Automate is that it's really easy to get started, um, but it's hard to, to take it all the way. Um, so it's, um, it's good to keep that in mind as you, as you evaluate all the different connectors. And I think on that point, we have noticed quite a few connectors which might have instant name recognition, but like you just said, they lack actionable triggers and actions that really change your business logic and enhances what you need to perform automatically. Yeah, yeah. We're seeing a lot of the, um, there's no code investment from like uh, so many different industries. You know, Microsoft is not in a vacuum here. We've got many, many different companies, many um, big names that are getting into this place. Um, I know Amazon has their own and Oracle and um, there's been the, the startups um, for years now that have been in this space. Um, but in general, um, you know, it, it, if Power Automate feels like programming, but you're just using worse tools, then that's kind of an indication that maybe you're not using the right thing or maybe the connectors aren't the right kind of the right fit for you there. So that is um, some of the ways that you can tell the good from the not so good. One other thing that you can uh, that that um, would be on the not so good front is if it's very specific. We've seen a number of connectors that are created that exist solely to bring uh, you know a particular company into the space. Um, it is um, I won't name names here, but we've seen companies that come in that their connectors provide just single uh, like a single thing like bring the widget company to your Power Automate which is great for customers of widget company, but not so great for you if you're not already a customer of the widget company. Um, so you'll have to sift around and kind of look around those that are there that really are just self-serving. So we don't want to end this on a not so good note. So let's move on to what a great connector has. What makes something spectacular? What makes us rate it five stars out of five? Um, you know, when I talked about documentation, um, so Microsoft provides it, and you know, we said that a, a great connector doesn't need documentation, um, but you're still going to need it. So um, as you're building these things out, uh, you've got your, uh, you know, as you're building a flow, you'll need to know how to um, to send the data from one action to the other, or you know, what comes out of the trigger. And being able to understand that beyond what Microsoft documentation has is really making it makes a difference um, because you know the Microsoft documentation sometimes will say things like you know it needs the contact ID but if that's not generally enough you'll need to know a little bit of context because every single connector is essentially a different company and you you know everybody has their own view of how these things work 
And that documentation doesn't have to just be a document, a PDF, or step-by-step -step instructions. We've seen some really nice documentation through video um, and other media as well. So mm -hmm. a great connector will really make it easy for you to get up and running with the tools that they have available for you. Yeah, and that sort of fits in on the, the next point here, which is the support channel. So documentation really is just another form of support. Um, it's just like support that's done for you. So, um, you know, I guess one and two here are really two parts of the same here. Um, so, uh, you know, support is, is there a way to get in contact with this company? Can you, can you talk to somebody there? Can you shoot an email and get a reply? Um, and you know, what, uh, what does that look like? All right. So that brings us to number three, which is the clear use cases. Um, and that is, uh, kind of evident by looking at the actions and triggers. Uh, they should be well described. They should make sense. They should be written in a way that uh, that it, it it fits in with what you anticipate to use this connector for. Um, so I, I hate talking in general. So we'll we'll talk more um, specifically with uh, you know we did a review on all the different document signing connectors, and um, with that uh, you know you'd want to be able to look at it and um, and you know they have different terminology again they're all different businesses um, so you know it should be when a document is signed would be a, a good trigger name versus you know when an envelope is prepared which you know might make sense if you know that company but if you don't know the company eh, it's not always a good fit um, because then you, you know an envelope would mean more business stuff um, so the fourth point is uh, sample flows so um, I always like it when I find a bunch of sample flows. Um, you know, I find it helpful to get started, and uh, and that's always good because it gives me examples of how to use the thing from start to finish, um, that will help me to get up and running with a, a connector. Um, now, Power Automate's still really new, so we don't have a lot that have sample flows yet. And when we're talking about sample flows, that can be included in that documentation that's created for the connector. It can also be templates which have been created on Power Automate, and we'll look at those a little bit later. All right, so now we know what a good, what a not so good, and what great connector have. So how can we make better choices? How can we make sure we are picking good connectors? Okay, uh, so going back again, Power Automate, you are a programmer, you are programming. Um, you know, I've been a software developer for 20 years now. And um, it is programming it just like any other is. It's just a different set of tools, um, and it makes it really easy to integrate these different different connectors, different companies together. Um, so uh, some things to keep in mind as you go to choose these connectors is that every single connector that you use, each connection you use, is a potential point of failure for your business. Um, so when you are building these things out for your organization just realize that you want to reduce the number of of points of failure um, and power automate actually helps and hurts with this um, so uh, what that means is that uh, you know if you have a space that has a lot of competition and you're choosing a good connector it should be easy to swap out with others so that potential point of failure is something you can recover from pretty quickly um, now you can always build a custom connector um, so if you have, you know, a service that doesn't exist, you can build a custom connector there for it. Um, but uh, the certified connectors will stay updated. So um, everything we're talking about here is about the certified connectors and um, trying to, uh, you know, trying to, to use those because the certified connectors means that the companies that are, are putting these out are going to stay updated. Uh, you'll have these updates come through and Microsoft is really good about um, keeping the connectors um, uh, so that they, they live a long time. So, um, you know, the certified connectors then can help you reduce those failures because anything that changes on those external companies um, will then be... Uh, Cat. Come on. <laughs> uh, so anything that changes on the certified connectors um, will get updated. Uh, we keep hitting home about the point that documentation um, so documentation is so important for Power Automate um, because you need to know how these things are working. It can't be a black box. Um, the Microsoft cert, uh, uh, connector documentation is uh, long-lived, 
but it doesn't it's not always complete so you want to have connectors that have their own documentation their own support channels um, which means that before you can go dive into any connector you need to do research so you need to know what available uh, what's connect what uh, uh, documentation is available what support is there just kind of do your research because you are potentially putting in for a very long time um, you know Temporary usually isn't when it comes down to, to these things. You need to think about what your expected lifetime is because once you solve your particular business problem, um, it's potential that it's going to live there for a very long time. Um, you know, a hip young API startup probably isn't going to be, you know, it might work really great now, um, but if they're offering it for free, it's likely they could go out of business or uh, they're going to raise the price significantly in the future once they've they've you know got their hooks into you. Um, you know, it, it kind of kind of a common theme here is watch out for the hooks because there are many out there um, in the the power automate space, um, and you just want a company you can understand that makes sense that you can work with the you know that has some good support and documentation. Yeah, those are great tips. Thanks. So now that we've talked about connectors, how to identify good parts and not so good parts of them. Uh, we want to make sure that we give you some resources to help you pick the right connectors for your organization. We're going to go through two connectors today. First, we're going to take a look at Microsoft Official Connector Documentation. This is available at flow.microsoft.com slash connectors. And this is your certified connectors. These are all of the not custom connectors, which have gone through that Microsoft certification process. They have actions and or triggers, um, and they have the documentation available on Microsoft's connector space. These are best used when you know exactly which connector you're looking for. You know you want to connect with Twitter. You would go here and get started. It does have the ability to sort, but the sort is extremely limited. It's only sorting by premium or standard connectors. So let's take a tour of Microsoft's site and then we'll come back. So here we are at flow.microsoft.com slash connectors. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to see what we're looking at. You can see right at the top, you can search up by a specific connector. Again, this is just going to work for the connector name itself. Up here, I can change my sort. Like we said, it's either standard, which will just change what's down here, or premium, or I can see all. So if I wanted to search for something specific, I could put SMS in here, and I can see all of the connectors that have SMS in their name. So there's quite a few here, and you can see at a glance, these are all premium. If they weren't, they wouldn't have that premium underneath. So if I click on any one of these, it's going to bring me to information about a specific connector. So we have the name of the connector, a brief description that that company has written to describe the purpose of their connector. There's a link to their documentation. And then with some of them, this is where Nick was saying, the, the use cases and clear understanding and sample templates. Well, there are wonderful templates for some connectors. I wouldn't say the minority of them have templates, but this is where they would show. And it's showing you exactly how people are using them. Um, on the bottom left-hand corner of each of these, it'll tell you if it's an instant flow or an automated flow. In the bottom right-hand corner are the number of flows that have been made with that. So if I come back for a second, I'm just going to pick Outlook because I think a lot of people are using Outlook. And I think we'll be able to see some really cool templates here. So let's go to Oh, this one has a cool... Outlook.com? Yeah, they've, they've got like their own custom site on the other one. It's really cool. So here's Outlook.com again. Here's the name of the connector, a brief description that that company has written about the purpose of their connector and what it does. Um, and then you can start to see some really big flows here. So save Outlook.com attachments to your OneDrive is one of the most popular templates. It might be the most popular template in Power Automate. That is pretty close. And what you do with, if you were interested in implementing this in your organization, it's so simple. Click on this. It shows you exactly what connectors you need to implement. And then you just click this button, try it now. And then you can con configure it to your environment. So it's really slick way to get started and see how other people might be using those connectors today. Now I do want to go to the C documentation link and show you what the documentation looks like. We're not going to go through this in a large amount of detail, um, but you can see this brings me to 
docs.microsoft.com slash connectors. And they're all sorted here, A through Z on the left, so you can check the documentation out if you're interested in that. But the specific documentation here will tell you everything you need to know about that. It's telling you known issues. Um, it's giving you in-depth details about the specific actions. I can click on any one of these and it really dives me down directly into that action. So there's a lot you can do from the Microsoft site. A lot of information about connectors, how to use them, um, and different resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring us back to our slideshow because I do want to show you this second option, which is new. It's connectorreview.com. This is looking at all of those same connectors, but having them categorized by use case and rated from one to five stars. So we built this and we can give you a little bit of a background of why we did this. Um, and that's because we didn't know specific companies that we wanted to search for. We knew use cases that we were interested in. Nick was talking about document signing. That's a really big one. So this started when we were looking internally for some connectors. We were looking for a new email marketing provider actually. And we didn't know what we wanted, but we wanted to see what was available in Power Automate which is impossible to do on the Microsoft site. So we started tagging all of the connectors for our own uses. And then we thought, well, if we have this need, so, so might you, so might a lot of people. If you're already working in the Power Automate space, if you've already integrated the Power Platform to help automate your business processes, it makes sense to find something that connects to it. So connectorreview.com was born so you don't have a specific vendor in mind, but you want to search by use cases. And the neat thing about this is you can sort by hundreds of categories and use cases to find what's out there. So let's take a quick tour of connector review. Let's hop over back to the internet here. And this is just connectorreview.com. You're free to check this out. It's a free resource. And again, it's really just organizing every connector by use case. So you can see as I hover over these, which again are exactly the same as what you find over Microsoft, it tells me right away who it is, it links to their documentation, and there's a rating. Now this is a rating created by humans, it was created by our team, and we analyzed it based on the criteria that we talked about before, what makes a good, what makes a not so good, and what makes a great connector. So you can take any single one of these um, and click on it and see some information. So here's the name of the connector, here's our rating. This is a description that was created by that company to describe their connector like we were looking at on Microsoft's. And this is a use case um, that we had written. It also links to the Microsoft documentation, but then we take it a step further because if you recall, we said a good connector has its own website and vendor documentation. So if we have any of that, that's all gonna be listed here. These are our tags. So. Acumatica has CRM, ERP, OData, OData filtering, has actions. So these are the tags, and you can suggest your own tag if we didn't put one in there that's relevant to you or something you think would be helpful for others to look for. And then it's got a detailed list of triggers and actions. So if I click on any of these, it's gonna open up the Microsoft documentation directly. So it's, it's just a complement to what's already here in Microsoft documentation, just kind of taking it a step further. So I'm gonna close out of this, and I want to talk about the tags. So these are the use cases. They're alphabetized A through Z. So Nick was talking about SMS before. So if I type in SMS and search, here are all of the players that have SMS as an offering. Now in contrast, if we come back over to flow.microsoft.com and we search for SMS, the only results we're going to see here are those that have SMS in their name. So here they are. And there's duplication there so it's not super clear you can see it's uh, recently connect recently added but they're, they're all duplicated top mm -hmm. and bottom good point so there's 11 in Microsoft documentation if you were to search for SMS when in fact there's 24 there are 24 connectors that offer SMS and some of these are great offerings that you wouldn't find if you're simply searching for that word um, so from here you can hover again over all these and just take a look at how they're rated again keeping in mind how we've rated them based on the criteria we talked about before mm -hmm. and if you see the rating and you think that we're wrong please feel free to connect us we're only human we've done the best we can 
but there are 465 and we're a small <laughs> company. So, um, you know, we've done the best we can to give you guidance, but this site was built for you. It's built purely as an information resource and we're just trying to make it as helpful as we can. Absolutely. So let's open one of these because um, I know we've done a lot of analysis as well. So we've really spent a lot of time getting to know every single one of these connectors. We've read through the documentation. We've gone to the website. We've checked if they have vendor documentation. So occasionally, if we've reviewed this specific connector, you can click this button to read our review and it'll take you either to a blog or a video that we've done where we're talking about what it does and gives you more details as well, just from our business perspective. Yep. So um, Nick, do you want to take control and talk about anything else yeah. on connector review? I want to show how you can use this to bounce around a bit. So. You know, as you are exploring these things, we'll go back to, you know, any of these and you just jump in, you know, Acumata is an ERP connector. So you can just kind of bounce around from connector to connector and see how all of those are, are, are there. So, um, you know, you can, you can do that and really explore the, the space here, uh, just bouncing around to the different use cases. Um, really cool to get to know what's out there. Um, and you know, it's the sort of thing that, uh, that we built because we found it really useful um, to, to do. And we just like this space a lot. So uh, you know, all the details are here. You have all the triggers, all the actions. It links you directly to it. So if, if you're in the research phase, um, then you can use this to really kind of do your research very quickly as you go through all the different connectors. Um, again, the website here links directly to the vendor's website. So that goes out. We've done research on all of them to try and find the right, uh, the right uh, space for it and the right links for it. Um, if it says vendor documentation, that's a link to the actual documentation, the technical documentation that you might need for that vendor. Um, whereas the Microsoft documentation always links to the Microsoft documentation and these link directly to the actions and triggers. Um, so here, that's always the, the link to the Microsoft documentation, trying to make this as useful as possible. Um, it will work on mobile too, so you can kind of open and close that. Um, but yeah, feel free to explore. We've got hundreds of categories. Yeah, and, and let us know, again, if you have suggestions for other tags. This is designed to be a resource for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we very much appreciate, like we have this GCC and GCC high tag, which someone very kindly recommended that we start to tag all our connectors with. So we were able to come in and update those based on user feedback in connector review. So that said, I think we're ready to transition over to a case study and demo. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So for our case study, we have created a fictional organization called Smith and Associates LLC. So let's talk a little bit about how this company is working. For software stack, their sales team is on Dynamics 365. The website's built on WordPress and all users are on Office 365 apps. You are the solution architect and you need to design the simplest integration possible using out of the box whenever you can. A new requirement has come in. Today, all of the website forms are emailed to one address and that one person is tasked with processing all of those forms. Management would like to have leads go directly into Dynamics 365 for the sales team to manage. And if the budget on those leads is above $100,000, a message should be posted to team so management can review and approve it. All right, so now that we've talked about the case study and we know what we need to solve for, why don't we head over to the two resources that we talked about to kind of research what connectors we can use to build this flow. Um, so we know WordPress is one, so we need to trigger our flow based on a WordPress form submission. So let's look for WordPress on the Microsoft Power Automate site where I can research my connectors. Um, so great, there's a WordPress connector. Let's take a look at this connector. Um, I'm gonna go to the documentation because I wanna see if it has the right actions and triggers. So um, we need a trigger for this one and the trigger is when a post is created. So that's not really that's what I need. Work. No, yeah. that's yeah. the WordPress platform. Why don't you go back and search for forms? All right. It's a great suggestion. So we're going to head back to the Microsoft connector site and we are going to look for forms. We'll just do form. That works. Oh my, that's a, a lot, lot of forms. Yeah. Okay. So there are a lot of forms here, but I really can't tell which of these 
work with WordPress because none of them say WordPress. All right, so I think in this scenario, I'm going to head over to Connector Review um, and let's check out tags. Well, hey, we're already at F. Why don't we see forms first? Okay, so we're seeing like, like the same, the same forms. Thing. Yeah. So why don't we come down here and I can close this out. We'll just type in WordPress. Oh, there it is, WordPress. Oh, great, there's three. So there's WordPress, which is the platform that we saw, but there's also Gravity Forms and Power Form 7, which since my organization is using WordPress, um, I know that these are two add-ons to WordPress, which do form processing. I don't know, I've never heard of Power Form 7 though. Let's check out Power Form 7. Oh. Slight disclaimer, PowerForm 7 was created by Nick yeah. at Reenhanced for guilty. this kind of use case. <laughs> yeah. But um, it fits really well with the tech platform that we're talking about, with the software stack that we have. So mm -hmm. PowerForm 7 is a Contact Form 7 connector. So Contact Form 7 is a free form processing, mm -hmm. right? Form submission. So here's our trigger. Um, when a Contact Form 7 is submitted, it's exactly what I need. All right, so research for that is done. I know I need the Power Form 7 connector, which is going to take my Contact Form 7 submissions and trigger my whole flow. Mm -hmm. All right, so what else do we need to figure out, Nick? I think we know some of them. So we know it has to go in to Dynamics 365 as a lead, and we have a super strong Dynamics 365 background. So I know I need to use the Common Data Service connector for that. Yep. So I don't think we need to do any additional research around that. So I know for WordPress what I'm going to do, I know for the leads and for approvals, we need to incorporate approvals for this as well. I think there's just the one approval process. So let's take a look at approvals. I don't, yeah, they have theirs. And there we are. Um, so if you are not familiar with this connector, it's phenomenal. It's a fantastic connector. We use it in our system um, mm -hmm. and we've implemented it for others as well. So I can come into the C documentation on approvals. Um, and then we can start to check it out and see if it's a good fit. Yeah. Um, create an approval. Start and wait for an approval. The problem I have with the Microsoft documentation is that it just it's not very visual. Like you you have to read a lot, and sometimes it's really helpful to like see what these things look like. Um, the templates are really helpful for that, and they're really trying to promote that. So if you go back, Heidi, to the um, to the thing, you've, the other option you have is at the top where it says search templates, the big blue outline thing. Mm -hmm. um, we can type in WordPress or form there. I honestly don't know what that's going to do. I think it's just going to give us a list of those things on the bottom. Yep. Um, but uh, again, this is overwhelming. Um, you know, form isn't a really good one because as you can see, it's very heavily skewed to the Microsoft forms. Um, and then if you put in WordPress here, um, you're still getting a bunch of these, but these are just coming from the, you know, the WordPress um, connector. There's nothing there that, that lets you get WordPress and forms. So we'll put in approvals too. Yep. So we can see what's here. Yeah. In fact, it looks like they have a category all for approvals there. Mm -hmm. um, so we are kind of building this, uh, this uh, presentation today with the assumption that you know a bit about some of the basics for Power Automate. Um, so you know that common data service is what you need for the dynamics and approvals is um, it's really decent done, uh, decently built um, system for, for approval. So we're going to use the Microsoft things, um, but uh, you know it comes down to, to showing how you do these research around um, you know finding what works with the tech stack you already have um, and how difficult it can be to find uh, to find exactly what you're looking for. So a lot of this is really um, to show you the problems here and hopefully ask for your help tagging these things um, to, to help get everybody uh, a better resource on it. So um, we'll, uh, we'll keep going and, um, and you know, see what we can find for our WordPress site. Um, so as we showed the WordPress tags, there's not a lot out there, but WordPress powers 40% of the internet. So it's very li likely that your organization somewhere already uses WordPress. And one of the biggest things is the forms. So we talked about Contact Form 7, um, and the other one is Gravity Forms. Um, and that one's much more like Power Automate. You can just drag and drop to build forms. Um, so if you pull up the Smith & Associates website there, um, you can see we have our, our site here, um, Smith & Associates uh, LLC. 
Um, it provides wonderful services to uh, dog walkers by day and the Flat Dookie Corporation, um, which, as you can read, they do things. Um, so uh, we have a, a form on the website, um, and uh, we need to take this and, and turn it into some actionable input. Um, so, uh, you know, this is more about the uh, research than it is about the actual implementation. Um, so, um, you know, that's kind of what we're trying to, to show off here. So, that said, we would like to show you a demo, and we're going to use this case study, um, and we are going to actually build this flow to show you what this might look like using all the information we garnered before, both using the Microsoft website and documentation and using connectorreview.com. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Nick and he's going to dive in and create a flow for us. All right. All right. Welcome. Let me walk through how we're going to set this thing up. This is our Smith & Associates website um, and we have our snazzy form already put on here. Now, WordPress does not come with its own form software, so you're going to have to do some research into which one you want to use. Um, it's pretty easy to convert forms um, on, on a website. You can just drop them on. Um, what we wanted to look for was something that's simple, that's easy to use. Um, so there's a couple options that integrate directly with WordPress um, to kind of keep your exposure and your potential points of failure um, pretty localized. Uh, we here like WordPress a lot because it is open source and it allows you to um, kind of own the code and, and modify it as you need um, in the future. Um, but again, if you're using Power Automate, it's likely that you're not going to have somebody on staff who wants to go diving into the code. The nice thing is, is that you own it and it, um, you know, you're, you've got potential uh, fewer points of failure for it. So uh, Contact Form 7 is one of the forms that you can use. This is the most popular form library. Um, and it is um, it does require the knowledge of HTML to build out your forms. It um, is not as user-friendly as some of the other options. Uh, Gravity Forms works really, really well. Um, that has a interface on the back end. You'll see we already have Gravity Forms installed and we have the Power Automate add-on. Um, and, you know, we'll just go and show you how the form looks, but you can easily just drag and drop these things in. Um, so if you wanted to add new fields, you can just make a form that way pretty easily with um, crafting forms. Uh, the other option is uh, that you have is jot form here, um, and that allows you to, um, to build forms here. Um, and, you know, from here you can see they have another interface that is very similar to Gravity Forms. Um, you can just drag and put the forms together just like you saw there. Um, Job Forms nice because you can get it uh, started right away, but again, it's got its own publishing, um, which is, uh, it's, it's an external interface which adds more potential points of failure. Um, so we're going to stick with Gravity Forms because it's already installed, but more importantly because it's served directly from the website here. So um, as I showed you on the back end, we have that Gravity Forms plugin installed. Um, and over here um, on the flow, um, the flow interface, we can do our research here, or you can use Connector Review to look up the WordPress tag. You'll be able to see then all the actions and triggers with just a couple clicks. Um, and you can kind of walk through and see how all these guys work. Um, and, uh, you know, as, uh, as people, as you guys um, submit more tags to, uh, to the connectors, it makes it better for everybody. So connector review should be a resource that's used um, by everyone around the world. It is a, a thing we built um, out of love for, for everyone to use. So let's dive right into creating this flow because I wanna make sure that we get you guys out of here on time. So I'm gonna jump through this really quickly. We're creating an automated flow. We're gonna call it Smith and Associates. And um, from here, once you get a, a trigger, once you start building a flow, you really should know what it is you want to use already. So from this, we know we're going to use Gravity Forms. And um, what you really don't want to do is be halfway through building a flow and then um, have to save it or turn it off um, and not know how to continue. So um, I have already set up the connections on this. Um, so that we can move through this quickly. So as we get a new flow, um, we're going to put it into common data service. So we're going to do that and we're going to pick this as a lead. 
and um, and then we're going to fill in the required fields here. So last name we're going to pull from Gravity Forms um, with the last name here. Topic we're just going to put in website submission and uh, description we've got from the website. So we're going to grab that as well. We're going to describe your needs, and we should always put a first name and the email address because we have both of those as well. So first name and email address. All right, cool. So now uh, when this form is submitted, it will create the, uh, the lead for us in our common data service, um, Dynamics 365. Basically, it'll show up over here. Um, so what we need to do now is our Teams message. And um, I saved this because I had had things break before. So we're going to put in a condition. And we're just going to make sure that um, budget amount as it comes from Gravity Forms, which is all the way down at the bottom. Um, so if the budget amount is greater than or equal to uh, 100,000, um, then and we'll just do that. Uh, then we want to post a message in Teams. So from here, we need to put the message in um, Teams. And um, post a message. And we're just going to put this into the um, into the Smith and Associates. And we'll just put it right into the general channel. And it'll say a new lead has been posted that is highly qualified. Smith team, get to work. All right. So um, the only other thing we need to do is the approval process. And I think what we're going to want to do is um, before any of this stuff happens, we should probably put our approval right here. So um, we will put our approval up here as soon as this thing saves and we'll be done. Let's go with this. Okay, so add an action and we're just going to say approvals. And um, you guys are probably familiar with all of this. So we're going to start and wait for an approval um, just to make this easy. So start and wait means that this flow will kick off when this is uh, first created, but then it will not um, proceed past this step until the wait for approval is completed. So approval type is, and we're just going to wait for this. So we're just going to say it is a approve, reject, first to respond, and it'll say new lead, and we'll just put in the person's name. So new lead, um, first name, space, and we'll put the last name in and assign this to, um, we're just going to put an email address here. So we're going to put my email address and it'll pull that up. So we can save that. And um, um, so this is how this all works. Let's go through and test this and, uh, and I'll show you how it works and get you out of here on time. All right, so it is starting now. So we're going to pop over here add in our form and it will be, nope, that's not it. And all right, this is a flow test. And from here, we're just going to put in our budget. We'll say $120,000. Okay. So once we hit submit, now it's going to run. It's going to go through the approval process. So we're going to see the approval pop up on my phone. And we can also see it pop up. So you can see there it's running. You can see the approval will pop up here in the approvals tab. It's under the action items. Uh, so if we just reload that, uh, you can hear the approval came through. And here it is. So we're going to mark this as approved and send that through come back and you'll see that that's now run. It's put the data into our system here. So if we refresh this guy, you'll see that we have our submission there. And, um, and then if we go over to Teams here, uh, you can see that the data has been put into Teams. So everything is working as we expected it and it is all ready and done. And sadly, that brings us to the end of our time together today. Thank you so much for joining us. We've really enjoyed doing this session with you. 
Um, and we encourage you to keep in touch after this is over. Let us know what you thought. Let us know if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, ideas. Um, and if you have any problems or if you run into any stumbling blocks when you're trying to figure out how to create a flow, we're here for you. So this is our contact information. You've got our email addresses and our Twitter handles here. Um, but thank you so much and enjoy the rest of Scottish Summit. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure.